What's your life goal? And have you achieved it? Yeah, I married you. Aw, gross. You really need to go out there and make sure the whole world hates you. My butthole is all over the internet. A fine wine. She keeps me in the basement and pulls me out when she needs me. If I drink Sambuca, he's getting it. I bought a case. You can tell a lot about a person by the way their tits, pussy, or dick looks. You come near my cheeks and it's not going to be a good day for you, homie. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be special. Welcome to the Two Onions Podcast with Danny Daniels and Vic. What's up, guys? I'm Danny Daniels, and next to me is my husband, Vic. And with us today on the beach, <laughs> chilling on the beach, is Pierre Rogers. <laughs> Surprised you don't have your bathing suit on. I do. I do actually have my bathing suit. You just don't want to see that on camera. That's the trick. <laughs> It's a typical Zoom call, dressed from the waist up, right? <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> That's right. What's going on? How are you? I am doing amazing. 2020 has been uh, such a phenomenal year, a weird year, a hard year, a great year. But uh, all in all, I couldn't be happier. You're probably the only one that said that about 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, to, 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 to raise my hand and say, dumb luck, standing in the right place at the right time, Mm -hmm. I'll take that. So that's effectively what happened to me and my team. So we're really happy. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. So I have a bunch I want to talk to you about because we have Thanks. so we have a ton in common and I love it so much. But originally we met because of Puro Trader, which is your company, um, which you can trade, buy, sell cigars, which I love the concept. I love everything about it. I'm actually wearing a cigar shirt for you today. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> what made you go from cigars to your new company, which is Yayan? Did I say it right? Did you did. That it right. That's correct. Thank you. So, um, the so we started with cigars because it's the industry I knew the most about, and it's also the smallest of the industries that we wanted to go into. And so, when we think about cigars, there are sort of two other components that we typically enjoy with cigars. One being Scotch, bourbon, and whiskey what I call the browns, right? Um, and then the other one is wine. And, and if you kind of think about it from a sort of a stair step, cigars are the smallest market from a market size. Whiskey and scotch is significantly bigger than cigars and wine is exponentially bigger uh, than whiskey. And so long story short, this Pure Trader has been doing fantastic. Um, we got noticed by some venture capital firms. Um, we decided to accept an investment and they said, well, we're going to give you this money, but Cigars are too small. I want you to focus on these two other verticals, scotch, bourbon, whiskey being one and wine being the other. So long story short, we looked into the marketplace. We took the skill set that we already had, the code that we already had, the team that we've already had, and what we've learned in the marketplace to apply to a very similar thing, wine. And uh, long story short, alcohol is highly regulated as is tobacco. Whiskey specifically as a spirit is even more so. And so we actually skipped doing the bourbon and whiskey space because the regulatory burden around shipping between states and what have you is, is so difficult, it's frankly not worth it. When in wine, it's actually way easier and a much, much larger market. And what was interesting about all that is we hit the ground running and the company has absolutely gone vertical and COVID only helped us move that along yeah. faster. <laughs> yeah. No one wants everyone, to go to a liquor store. Everyone like me at home <laughs> drinking wine. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. The, the moment that sin brands take a tank, then we're all in deep shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, we so are. So are you, is, is for those listening that have no idea what we're talking about, how would you describe Yayan? Is it similar to Puro Trader, but insert wine? Is it its own entity? Is it... Yeah, so, so good question. Um, no, it is definitely very, very different from Puro Trader. So uh, without going into a long-winded explanation, the sh I'll give you the story of where the idea came from, which is my wife and I had a rare night out away from the kids. We go out to this fancy restaurant, you know, put, get all gussied up. We sit down at this restaurant and the waiter comes over with this like tomb, like this massive volume of, of a wine list. And I'm trying to make the night like really special, like any, any good husband would try. And I panic and I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? There's like so many names on here, I don't know. So I happen to be friends with two sommeliers. Um, they're both sommeliers at the French Laundry. 
So I, while she excuses herself to the powder room, I shoot a quick text to Eric and to Oscar, and they give me great recommendations. Uh, we order the wine. The night is amazing. My wife's like, wow, how did you find this one? This is really incredible. And so I just go, Ugh. I cheated. I texted my buddies who are sommeliers, and she makes the comment like, oh, must be nice to be able to do that. And that's actually where the idea of Yayin came from, where we can turn everyone into an instant sommelier for themselves. And so if you think about what every person wants out of a bottle of wine, mm -hmm. they want a great bottle at a fair price. Mm -hmm. That could be wildly different for everybody. And so what we've been able to do is using AI, we have a recommendation engine that helps you identify exactly what your specific palate is and matches that on a chemical level to the different wines that are out there so that the wine we recommend to you is specific to what you like, not what some you know, rating agency tells you you're supposed to like, but what you actually like. And so we find that people are thrilled by, by doing that because they're, they're excited to try new wines and they actually enjoy them. I love that. So do you have to like, do you put in your flavor profiles that you like, or do you say, oh, I like this 2018, whatever, whatever. And then they kind of like build off that. Does that make any sense? Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. It's a great question, actually. Um, so we start by asking you a handful of non-wine related questions. Um, okay. We do that because we want to take people who are novices, who are new to wine, and, and empower them. And so we don't expect them to know wine stuff, wine terms, wine vintages, or even varietals. So we ask you stuff like, do you like the smell of fresh cut mushrooms? Do you drink black coffee? Uh, do you like milk chocolate versus dark chocolate? And, and these are palate identifiers, right? Sour, sweet, salty, bitter, etc. And that breaks you into a profile, how you answer all these questions. Um, and we've identified 150,000 different palate profiles. So once we figure out which one of those 150,000 you are, we then use a AI software to match you with wines out there that will exactly match that. And so how do we, how do we know that you like it? That's, people are always like, well, okay, I still don't, I mean, I get it, but I don't really get it. Yeah. The success rate is 94% of the time that person will buy that bottle again. Wow. That's great. That's, that's phenomenal. Insane. That's pretty high. Yeah. So that's what we do. And then we allow vineyards to plug in directly into our software mm -hmm. so that we disrupt the three-tier system. So you as a consumer go direct to the vineyard. We cut out the middleman. These boutique vineyards that wouldn't normally have access to, you can now reach out to directly and order your wine right from the craftsmen and women that make the stuff. It's really cool. I love that. Can you order a bottle individually or do you have to go by case? Oh, you can order individually. Absolutely. That's so cool. So I can go in, I can do a profile, take all, take the test and then it'll, it'll come up with a list of wines I like. I can pick 12, have them come to my house and then just try new wine basically. Yes. And so we're doing something. I'm a label <laughs> shopper. I am so guilty. <laughs> well, well, actually, Nick hates it. I'm not allowed everybody. to pick the wine. Because I'll be like, oh, this one has a puppy on it. And I'll, like, it's, I'm so bad. We'll be drinking a lot of cupcake, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love this. And can you compare, like, um, does it give you an outline of your flavor profile? Like for me and him, like we like similar wines and we don't like similar wines. Can you like kind of see what crosses over? Yeah, so so that's a new feature. Funny enough that you asked that. Thank you. You would think we set this up in advance. Yes. Um, so that, <laughs> no, we did. <laughs> we actually did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Um, I thought we were going to talk about cigars. Um, so I haven't next. even gotten to cigars yet, <laughs> but. <next. laughs> um, so, so we have it so that if Vic sets up a profile and you set up a profile mm -hmm. and you can tell the software, hey, we're at dinner and it will optimize and tell you what bottle the two of you will like the most, not what one of you would like individually. Oh, I oh, that's love great. that. So yeah. are you going to, are you going to make it almost like a pseudo social network too, where you can add your friends and. Yeah, th that's exactly right, because we, we have the network effect with that, right? So let's say you guys went out to a, a business dinner or a personal dinner, and there's six, eight, ten people at dinner. Mm -hmm. Well, using our software, you can optimize the wine you choose for the entire table, which is really, really cool. Um, 
But the only way that that works is if you guys tell everybody else, hey, you got to go on Yaya and you got to fill out this profile and we got to be connected. We got to be friends. Mm -hmm. Then the software will do its magic. Um, so it's a cool, tricky way of us getting our users to get more users. I right, love it. Right. Yeah, that keeps it going. But that's that's the whole trick of social media, isn't it? And for all of yep. them, yeah, just you right. know, get right. users to, to get users. That's it. I love that. So, like, can I make a profile and then, like, my fan base follow me? Or do you have to be connected in some way, shape, or form? Like, could it just be like, I just want to know what kind of wines, like, Mick Jagger likes. Can it be something <laughs> like that? Or <laughs> does that make any sense? We, we, yeah, so we have the data for that, actually, but we haven't rolled that out yet. That is that is coming, however, where you'll be able to geek out and see um, some of our board members' flavor profiles, and then we'll be able to add other sort of influence or whatever, and you'll be able to see what they what they drink, right? What they like. This is so cool. I'm, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Congratulations! Then, this is such an awesome. I would project. I would imagine if they fill out their profile and people want to see Danny Daniels' profile, there'd be a match as to what wines they both might like. That's exactly right. Automatically really cool. boost the sales of those wines. That's really cool. Just like a, it's just like a cool like, way to like, it's a way to connect with people too. You're like, oh, we have something in common, you know? Yeah. Now, yeah. Well, that's that's what's so great about it is is that you can connect with people that way and have exactly what you said a commonality of like, oh wow, you like this too, um, yeah. and it also empowers you to take a risk on something you haven't tried before. So, so let's take me for a quick example. So I like Camus, right? I like Camus cab. I know it's, it's boring and it's everywhere, but I like it, whatever. So it's $80 a bottle. That's kind of expensive for a daily, you know, glass of wine. Mm -hmm. The software can actually show me other wines within that exact flavor profile that are 30, 40, $50 a bottle, right? That just don't have Camus's big, big name behind it. Right. Um, so a lot of users are like, wow, you turned me on to a, a wine that is so similar to my favorite wine that I can only really afford for special occasions. Now I drink this other boutique wine that I've never even heard of, and I get to save 40 bucks a bottle or some huge number, right? Oh, right. I love this. Now, is, is it international? I mean, I, I, for example, I'm a fanatical Burgundy fan. Are we international? Can we get wines from basically everywhere? Or more? Uh, all I would say is, my lawyer would kill me if I answered this question. So uh, I'll put a pin <laughs> in that um, so that everybody knows bringing wine into the United States is incredibly complex. A bear, um, yes. it's, 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 it's a pain in the butt. So the boutique makers that you find when you're in France or Italy or Spain or, or even Peru and other places, um, it's very difficult to get into the United States. You have to find a distributor to pick you up. You've got to ship wine in. It's got to clear customs. And then it's got to go through the entire three-tier system. And for people who don't know what the three-tier system is, let's say you have a great Malbec. You're a mom and pop vineyard and you make a great Malbec. You sell your Malbec for 10 bucks a bottle to a distributor, a wholesaler, and he buys it, ships it up to Florida or California to get it through customs. He then owns that wine at 10 bucks a bottle. He goes to sell it to a distributor for 20 or $30 a bottle. That person turns around and sells it to a retailer and puts it on the shelf for 60 or 70 bucks. Meanwhile, the vineyard is making $10. They're making two or three bucks off that bottle because they sold it for 10. Mm -hmm. we're, we, you know, we're working on something that removes that whole section so yeah. that you, the customer, are going direct to that vineyard, even if it's international, which is really really complex but more to follow I love yeah it, it's when we were overseas in burgundy they can sh they ship to the united states like we bought wine it was shipped here they had that scotch not so much <laughs> we had a we had a mule the scotch yeah. back basically <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm even like thinking of this as like a cool way for people to connect and like you could even do like a group zoom call where like you have everyone connected all your friends and you're like, everyone has this wine in common, or let's do a tasting night, or let's do this. Everyone buys the bottles, and you can all sit together and, like, try them together. Yeah. I don't know. My brain's, like, going a million different ways. <laughs> I, everybody listening, I promise we did no prep at all. I did not pepper some of these questions. No, not at all. Literally, like, not at all. <laughs> So funny that you asked that, Danny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, I think we, have, we just we have, think alike. <laughs> yes, exactly right. So we have a we have a channel 
on our website called our VT channel, virtual tasting channel. So you can go there and do a virtual wine tasting with the craftsmen and women who actually make that wine right oh, wow. in your home. So you'll, you'll buy whatever their portfolio is. Maybe it's two bottles or five mm -hmm. bottles. It gets shipped to your home. And then we schedule a Zoom call with that winemaker right in your home. And you're doing a tasting with the men and women who actually make it, which is, which is incredible. You can actually share that link with your other friends, whether they're in the same room or in a different state, doesn't matter. And now you all can have this amazing group virtual wine tasting experience anywhere in the world. Wow. All right, you took yeah. the words out of my mouth. I thought I had a cool idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously you had a cool idea because they already did that. <laughs> okay, so for those for those listening that want to make a profile and want to figure out their palate, where can they go? So it's yayin.com. That's Y-A-H-Y-N. Could you have made it more difficult? Um, I know, I know. <laughs> you, could, you couldn't do goodwine.com? I mean, seriously. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I get so much flack for our name, but, um, you know, we- Is there a meaning? Uh, yes, there is a meaning. So Yayin is actually the very first word for wine believed to be ever in the world. So it's actually an ancient Greek slash Hebrew word for wine. Um, so it's been around for thousands of years. And we wanted to, you know, really pay homage to so embracing the tradition of wine while also focused on the future of technology and, and the merger of the two. So we chose a very difficult name, but I will say, because we have a lot of people push back on our name, um, we did testing. We did a lot of testing around names on what to name our company. We actually tested 25 different names using Google AdWords and running all these tests. So the exact same copy, content, exact same ad, the only difference being the name change. And Yayin actually tested through the roof compared to everybody else. So yes, we wanted to embrace the name, but we're, you know, we're also kind of analytical, you know, data folks and it, it, it converted the highest. So that's what we went with. It's kind of, it's kind it's of funny. Cool. Now that I know what it means, it's cool. It's kind of funny. Yayin meaning Hebrew for wine and Yahweh being Hebrew for God. They're really close together. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wonder. <laughs> drink a little wine, see God. It's all good. <laughs> That's exactly. You want to meet God, drink more wine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, listen, Jesus turned water into wine. There's a reason for that. <laughs> There's a reason for that. It's delicious. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. Okay, let's talk cigars. Okay. I'm surprised you're not smoking at the moment, to be honest. Unfortunately, I'm in communist California where that's a very difficult task to accomplish. It's just yeah, no kidding. Kidding. Oh yeah, there's like pretty much like no smoking in the state, right? Unless it's hot. Yeah, you can't you yeah. can't pretty much do anything in the state at this point. That's the last I checked, including have air conditioning. So <laughs> Rolling blackouts and fires going on there. It's a lovely place, but don't yes. worry. So, right. <laughs> so, so to explain Puro Trader because we were trying to explain that to a few people, and it's not the easiest concept in terms of tobacco. But yeah, so so I'm a cigar lover, a cigar fan. I've been in the business for forever, and like that's my passion, right? That's really my my thing, and I'm a nerd around it. I'm I'm a collector, so. Um, we developed a way for all the humidors in the world to be digitally connected. So you start a Puro Trader site, you, this is all for free, by the way, you start your profile, you go, hey, this is what's in my collection, click, 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 you add it to your virtual humidor, and now the world over can go in and search Danny's humidor, can search Pierre's humidor, and see what we have. Um, then, as a byproduct, by that, like, oh, Danny has something I really, really like. I wonder if she'll sell it to me. Um, we have a sales function where you can auction a cigar off or just sell it for a fixed price. And that's that was the idea of the site. And it was really for nerdy collectors like me who want the rare, the obscure, the vintage, the what have you. Mm -hmm. um, and we've built up a nice little community. It's growing nicely. I've set two people on my team to manage that business. And it's it's been fantastic. And so now where are we, right? Now we're the largest peer-to-peer -peer cigar exchange platform in the world. The community self-regulates. Everybody rates each other back and forth based on their transactions. We provide protection or guarantee every transaction. So everybody's safe. Everybody's legal. Um, all those protections are built in. And now you can find some of the craziest cigars in the United States. You will find them on Bureau Trader. 
That's awesome. What's the most wildest one you've seen on your site? Um, okay, so there's a couple. The one that blew me away the most, this is a funny story. So when we started the business, it was me and my partner, and he had this box of Tatawahe cigars. Mm-hmm. Um, they were called the Pork Chop. They didn't even come in a box. They came in butcher paper. <laughs> right? And so, and this, so it's 25 cigars wrapped in butcher paper. It's called the Pork Chop by Tatawahe, hence the butcher paper. It had the sticker on it. It said $199. Um, it was signed by Pete Johnson uh, when they first came out, the maker of the cigar. And my, we, my business partner and I had to put our collections up on the site first, right? It's a brand new site. No one's ever heard of it. So we put it up there and he put astronomical prices on this box because he didn't want anything to sell. Yeah. And so I think he listed it for like $900, right? He paid 200 and he put it for like 900 It sold for $5,700 within the first couple of weeks. And he cried. You can't pass that. that. (laughs) You can't can't pass that. that You can't. So he cried all the way to the mailbox. (laughs) (laughs) On his way to the bank. Yeah. (laughs) On the way to the bank. Yep. And so that was the craziest one. And funny enough, I ended up telling Pete Johnson, the owner of Tatuaje Cigars, that exact story. And he laughed and he's like, oh, that buyer got a deal on them. I've seen them sell for much, much more than that. Oh, my God. I mean, yeah, now your partner's kicking himself. <laughs> yeah, he's like, damn it, I could have gotten 10 grand. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, so I've seen some pretty cool stuff like that. Um, we actually have a box of cigars. I think it's still on there right now. That was a corporate gift from the C-Suites at Enron. Oh, Jesus. So it's got the end. So it's not, it's a box of Cuesta Rays. But it's got the Enron stickers on it and the letter that's like, hey, thank you so much, blah, blah, blah. Enjoy this box of cigars. He wants $25,000 for that. But that's a piece of corporate history. Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. So you see some pretty cool, crazy things on there. Yeah. <laughs> so you almost like look at it all the time because you don't want to miss something if it pops up. Uh, the hardest part of my day is not buying everything on my own site. Because <laughs> I see it before everybody else. And I'm like, ooh, I want to buy that. Ooh, I want to buy that. I'm like, no. No, it got to be good. <laughs> I got to let everyone else take a shot. I just feel like you like hoarding cigars around your house. Your, your wife ready to murder you. A hundred percent, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like squirreling away my cigar budget and hide, like tucking them behind the <laughs> toilet so no one sees them. Like, it's bad. It's it's full-blown hoarding. We're, we're in trouble because I squirrel away the wine budget and she squirrels away the cigar budget. So <laughs> you're our worst nightmare. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been like I have friends in Burgundy. I'm like, what do you got coming out this month? Yeah. You know, it's it's like Jake from State Farm. What, what are you wearing? You know, it's like... <laughs> And I can't go into a cigar shop without buying uh, at least three boxes. It's like it's horrible. <laughs> what are your go-to? What are your like? What's your daily go-to for a cigar? Ooh, man, I get this question a lot, but I I just don't have a good answer because I I'll tell you what it is right now. How about that? I'll okay. tell you what it is right now. This so week. yeah, this week it's um it's a couple different things. It is Nat Sherman Sterling Lanceros because I'm as you guys are probably aware, Sad. Nat Sherman. Yeah. Under- this um so as an homage to nat sherman shout out uh i've been smoking them um from the cuban side the cuer d'orsay number 50 love 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 that cigar um and then actually tatuaje's uh 51st taa edition which actually uses uh some some great tobaccos out of nicaragua um really 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 good cigar so two out of three of those you can buy on pure trade yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's sadly, um, those who don't know, Nate Sherman is, I believe it's the oldest cigar lounge in, in the country. Yeah, 90 years, I think. Closes down, I believe, the end of September. And that's where actually we met you. Was that the, yeah, was yeah. for the first time we met in person? And we actually met Nick Melillo, who was on the show at that event also. Mm-hmm. So it's it's yeah. got a little, it's got a soft spot for us. And it's yeah. kind of sad to see it go. Plus, we love Michael and the, and the staff there. They were great. You know, I, I, I struggle to not pop off at the mouth about 
uh, Altria's treatment of Nat Sherman, right? So Nat Sherman, uh, you know, is a, was a family-owned cigar company for, you know, close to 100 years, a mm-hmm. staple in New York City, really a storied um, business, just such a cool family and an amazing part of New York's history, right? Oh, yeah, very um, much so. And then for Altria to come out and go, oh, sorry, COVID, we can't afford the rent. Like, guys, you made $25 billion last year. You can afford yeah. the rent. New York City for a year. You you just aren't interested in cigars. You're only interested in cigarettes. And so they're keeping Nat Sherman cigarettes and they're dissolving the cigar business. And it's really sad because the their cigar business has been up year over year. Um, they're killing yeah. it. The blends, great business. Michael Herklotz has crushed it. Like it's very disappointing to see that be dissolved just because they weren't really interested in that segment of the market. I wonder if they like, do they own that building? I'm not sure. No. no. Oh, because I was like, if they own that building, that piece of property has got to be worth at least 10 mil. At least. It's like this <laughs> tiny, for those of you that don't know, it's like this tiny little townhouse in the middle of like all On these 42nd Street. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's like, like the like, up house, if the up house was like a cigar lounge. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it, it's funny you mentioned Michael. Michael has always been, you know, really gracious to us. And I hope Michael lands well. Michael, I know you listen, so uh, we wish you well. And if there's anything we can do to help you out, we gladly, but... Um, the guys there were guys. I'm not a cigar smoker, and they were all awesome. I loved going there just to talk to those guys. They were so knowledgeable, and it is yeah, it is sad, especially considering all of the the bonuses and benefits people are getting to to move rent out and not pay rent, and the state and cities doing things for them to play that game. It's it's a bit ridiculous. Yeah, it, it, it is very much, and they what's I mean I get that they're a multi billion dollar company, so Nat Sherman Cigars is a you know a rounding error for them. I, I get that. Um, but it is sad that they didn't even, at least in my, from my experience, they didn't even try to sell the business or keep it. It was just, nah, delete, move on. Yeah. It's a bummer because I wonder if there are people out there that would have loved to buy the business from them just for the love of the cigar. <laughs> I don't want to say you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like, Hello, I, sir. Can I please has, <laughs> yeah, please. gladly Plus, take that off your hands. As, as a part, again, it's a part of cigar history. I mean, it's the oldest cigar lounge in the country, you know, so yep. you know, it's sad. Yeah. I, I mean, when you, and when you look at the lineup of politicians and celebrities that were aligned with that brand through New York's history. I mean, it is, it's from the gl- sort of glamour days of Hollywood to mobsters to politicians. It's, it's everyone, right? I mean, they, he, Nat Sherman, the guy who founded it, was such an interesting, crazy cat who, who literally won this um, little store in a poker tournament, like an underground poker thing during Prohibition. And- I didn't know that. I mean, it's a crazy story, right? And now we're losing it because some accountant at Altria was like, now nah, we don't need it. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard. Yeah, I think I think Churchill went there or something. I mean, it's, it's like crazy, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, Greta Garbo to Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Like everyone. Yeah. 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 If you guys are in New York and listening to this and uh, before the end of September, go like poke your head in and just check it out. Because yeah. it is a piece of history and it's really cool. And, and it's sad. Yeah. Unfortunately, COVID's doing that to a lot of different things. We're losing a lot of stuff, but we'll bounce back. Yep. Always. <laughs> if you, I have a question for you. If you were to, like, for our listeners that are new with cigars, that don't really know where to start, do you recommend any, any like, intro to cigar class, like, some book, just any kind of, like, something to where people can, like, get started to learn about cigars? Good question. Um, yeah, great question. And one, one I actually get a, a lot. So I've written a few things around that. Um, you can, so I would recommend, you know, check out the blog section on Puro Trader. I have a section in there about you know, women and men choosing cigars badly. Like they, 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 when they're novices, they tend to make uh, selection choices that are kind of backwards. So let me give you an example. Women say, oh, I want something small and something petite. So they take something that is relatively short with a smaller ring gauge because they think, oh, less tobacco, it won't be as strong, which is actually (laughs) counterintuitive. Smaller ring gauge cigars actually have a higher flavor component to them. So they're actually stronger. Men do the opposite. They go, oh, I want a strong cigar. And they get this freaking Coke can of a cigar. And ironically, those actually have more air in the smoke and then 
the flavor ends up being uh, a little softer. So, so women should actually be smoking the Red Bull can size cigars, and men who want you just want women to put big things in their mouth, sir. (laughs) (laughs) May or may not be true. Uh, we, we had to get no, to that I, joke at I, some point. I, I, it was, you softballed it in. I, like, I couldn't avoid it. But, you know, I agree. I, like, so my favorites are all small. There, you know, it's funny, as, as we mentioned Nat Sherman, one of the things I loved about Nat Sherman is, is I go into a lot of cigar shops with my wife. I know the only reason why I know anything about cigars is because of you, her, and Nick and our friend <laughs> Chuck. The four of you guys have taught me everything I've ever needed to know about cigars, and I still don't know jack shit. <laughs> we'll go in, and immediately they look at me, and I'm like, I'm not, I have nothing to do like with this. this. I was like, you got to talk to her. So automatically they go over to her, and they find the lightest, <laughs> frou-frou, fruity-flavored, flavored cigar. I mean, just short of a Philly Blunt kind of crap, and they're giving it to her, and I'm, and I'm like in the corner going, oh, you just, this is not going to go. She's looking for a Maduro or some kind of, you know. Yes. Yeah, so- she starts right. talking about Nick cigars and Ligas, and these guys' <laughs> eyes get this big. It's hysterical to watch. <laughs> I'm sure, because they want to sell you some passion fruit infused bullshit, and yes. you're wearing a foundation t shirt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, which is as extreme to the opposite of that as it, as it gets. My favorite story is Nick sends me a box years ago of tabernacles, and I had oh, never. Yeah. Never smoked any Tabernacle before ever in my life. I wasn't familiar with the brand. And I woke up early one morning and I got to take the dog for a walk at like 6 a.m. So fresh palate, empty stomach. I grab a Tabernacle and I hop in, I, I grab the dog and we're walking down the trail and I'm smoking the cigar. And I call Nick at 6.20 in the morning or something. And I go, you son of a bitch, you nearly killed me. This thing is so strong. I'm I'm crawling back to my house and he's dying laughing, right? He's like, well, you're supposed to eat something. I'm like, you need to put a warning on this. (laughs) (laughs) Not for the faint of heart. Oh my God. See, that's like my go to. That's like one of my five go to's. Yeah. (laughs) That's an amazing cigar, right? It is for professionals. I like, I don't know. I like, I like heavy flavors. I like my coffee black. I like scotch, peaty scotch. I like heavy cigars. I don't know. Wow, it's just wow. So that, that leads us to the next thing that we know you're a bit passionate about coffee. Yes, sir. I've seen, I've seen you make coffee. It's a 20 minute <laughs> event on Instagram. <laughs> you got chemistry sheds. You got bean grinders. You know, like, he's, he's I'm talking- surprised Juan Valdez isn't pulling up with a mule at the, at the way these things go. He's talking shit, but he has so much envy for your oh, coffee machine. I, oh my God. It's, it's, you know what? If anybody wants to know if I watch porn, it's watching you make. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, it's a moment for me. I'm like, hold on, hold on. I gotta watch this. <laughs> So, so if you want a window into what my personality is, watch me make coffee because the oh. level of anal retentive detail nerdiness is at its max when I make it's, my coffee. It's, it's why on? you two get along so yeah. well. <laughs> it's because she's the same. Are everything. you doing this on Puro Trader? Where do you do your coffee stuff? Oh, on Instagram. I... Yeah, oh, no, gotta... no, no, I know, but on your Puro Trader page? Yeah. Yeah. And funny enough, I get it's so it's funny how like the world works. Um, because I love coffee. It's probably the thing I'm the most passionate about outside of cigars and wine. Um, Those are my three vices right there. Those are all three. Um, And I get more, like more comments and more sort of um, engagement, I guess, with my coffee content than anything else because I do Belgium coffee siphons. I do Japanese siphons. I do AeroPress, French press, Comex, pour overs, espressos, all kinds of stuff. And go, you know, I weigh it all out and keep talking dirty to me. Yeah. I- <laughs> <laughs> keep talking dirty to me. I love it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's bad, but it, I really, I get a lot, like people really nerd out about it. So it, it's just funny to share that passion with so many people. It's funny because, you know, obviously there's Danny Daniels coffee. And I don't think people are expecting that we went overboard in terms of the blends and what we did with it. And we'll get messages from people like, holy shit, don't ever stop making this coffee. We can't find it anywhere. <laughs> I think people just think that I just like slap my tits on something and we're like, yeah, here, buy this. It's Maxwell like, House, you know, really good coffee. it's actually really, really good coffee. <laughs> 
And afterwards, I, I'll, I'll, I, you and I are going to have a conversation afterwards because we might have access to some coffee beans because of what's been going on that isn't easy to get. So okay, we're working not, a deal. Like, can you working not drug deal. deal coffee yeah. on the show? <laughs> we're going <laughs> to... I got I to grab. I'll talk to you later. Like, FBI. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Are you, like, so much of a snob that when you have, like, regular people coffee, you're like, ugh, what is this? Okay, so super embarrassing. Um, I just won't, I know it won't be good enough. I just don't drink it. You know, okay, so that's, it's that, it's that level like, of snob. I'm like, oh my when God, you no. like go, okay, so like when you leave your house, you just like won't drink any more coffee for the day? There, so there's a few places. So, so I live in, in Southern California mm-hmm. and uh, Blue, I like Blue Bottle Coffee. They do a great job. Um, there's a place called Hearst Coffee that does a great job as well. I'm very, very selective. And if I don't go there, I don't get it at all. So you're not going not, to Starbucks, basically. Basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's that's the difference between you and I. I'm an addict. If I need coffee, three-day-old diner coffee. Mm-hmm. Put it in front of me. I'm drinking that's it. really gross. <laughs> I'm re- it don't matter to me. I may have to punch the wall to get it down, but I'm drinking it. <laughs> it's really bad. I've watched him, like, drink cold coffee, microwave it. It's just like, oh, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> Like when you're Jones in, you're Jones in, all right? When you yeah. <laughs> Pecking at your skin because you need coffee, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like starting to itch. <laughs> you know? it's like, uh... Are you still doing your podcast? I am. I am still doing my podcast. I, I will tell you, um, it's been amazing. It's been the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Sure, um, your children. I, We've, um, we've had some just incredible guests on and we talk about what I call the dip, right? Um, you know, Jan, we had you on, right? And we talked about when things are really, really bad in, in, in your life, wherever you were in your journey and like how hard it was and the one or two seemingly small decisions at the time that ultimately led to where you are today. And, and look, we've had Navy SEALs, rappers, rock stars, race car drivers. We, there's a wide variety of people on the show. And yet, like, those stories are actually really, really similar. And people really connect with that struggle. And so, you know, that's, I love doing it because it really helps people, especially in times like this, mm-hmm. where people are just sort of weighed down by this, like, oh, my gosh, is this ever going to end? Am, am I going to go back to work? Is, is life going to return to normal? Hearing people that are quite successful in their different fields, having those same doubts and risks and concerns and being broke and things like that, you know, it, it really helps a lot of people. So I really, really like it. Yeah, it's definitely, I, it was one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. It was really right. cool. If you want to, if you guys want to check it out, it's, there is no try. Where can they find it? Pretty much anywhere where there are uh, podcasts. So Apple and Spotify is where most people go. So we're, mm-hmm. we're there. Um, we've got some amazing guests coming up. Um, but some past episodes to listen to. Definitely listen to Danny's. Listen to Sharon Barber's, a really fantastic fashion designer, but crazy story on how we got there. We've had Antonio Cromarty on there, Marco Andretti, Ludacris. They've all, all got really, really cool stories. So, so check out a couple of those episodes. I love it. It is. It's like, it's very, I, I remember finishing that interview and like feeling motivated. I don't, I didn't feel like drained. Even though it was like my own story that I was telling, but it's just, it's very uplifting. (laughs) But it is, it's like the way you, the questions you ask and and what we talked about, it's it's very uplifting and I loved it. Um, And I've listened to a couple other ones and they're all just like, they're just good vibes. It's nice. So, so my goal, so, okay. So quick back story on me. So I grew up really poor, um, single, single parent. She was, you know, unfortunately a stiff alcoholic to this day. So it was really tough upbringing. And I was really, really hungry. Both I was lacking food, but really just hungry not to be poor anymore and not to live this kind of less than, less than exciting life. And I would have done anything to, to be successful, right? If you told me to run through a wall, I would have run through a wall. Like that's who I was. I was dumb. Um, and I just knew that life was hard and it sucked and I didn't want to do this anymore. And so I say that story because... The, my motivation for doing the podcast is that there's frankly a lot of charlatans out there in the business world that have never actually been successful, but they'll sell you success all day long, right? Whether it's, you know, buy Bitcoins or drop shipping or 
it's, you know, some buy my real estate program or, or whatever it is to get rich quick stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I, I take it as like a personal assault. I, I push back on those charlatans all the time, those snake oil salesmen, because if I was 20, when Instagram was around, I would have bought every one of those stupid courses and wasted my money and been even more poor. And yeah. And I hear these stories about people that go into credit card debt to buy these business courses, right? And, and it, it breaks my heart. So the point of the podcast is we don't sell anything ever. That's just a hard rule. This is not a money-making endeavor. We don't take sponsorship. We don't sell products. It's a zero. And we talk about things from people who have actually gone through it in the hopes that you as the listener can get something out of it that keeps you going. I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's the way it should be. <laughs> that's great. And it is, it's so great because you are, you're such a successful businessman and you're someone definitely to look up to. And it's just, it, it's, I think people assume that you're born into success and, it, and like the fact that it didn't come easy. It's even, you know, it, it happens, you know, like I wasn't born into success. Neither were you, neither were you. It's like, right. Most of, most of the major, big, successful people, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Zuckerberg, all of these guys, you know, Bezos, they all came from middle class or poor roots. I mean, Steve Jobs right, was an right. orphan. <laughs> so right. it's, it's internal drive that gets you there. A hundred percent. And um, people are led to believe that some of these excuses like, oh, you need money to make money. Um, it's not what you know, it's who you know, and there's all these barriers. No one said it was easy. Yeah. Yeah. No one ever said it was easy. It's not easy. It's hard. It's super hard. That being said, very attainable, right? Like it can be done. Um, If it can be done by someone like me, who's, you know, basically a moron, anybody else can do it. So (laughs) it it really, it's really not that hard. I, I would just say that you, you just have to be focused on something and work at it on a level that is unreasonable. And if yeah. you can do that, you can do it. Are you a workaholic? I don't like to think of myself as a workaholic. I know you two are, are workaholics like I'm a workaholic in that I don't really think of it as work. Like I enjoy it so much that, yeah. I mean, I get, yes, from the outside looking in, I guess you would call me a workaholic. Well, I guess the, I guess the question is, does your wife think you're a workaholic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> All right. Now you're stuck. You get to answer my questions. You ready? Okay. Go. Oh, boy. No. First, <laughs> first question. What's the most annoying question people ask you? Um, the most annoying question, I would say, is more of a comment that's framed as a question, which is, must be nice. Um, oh, yeah. Hmm. I get, oh, must be nice. I get that a lot, yeah. right? Because they, they don't know that I worked 18 hours a day for however many yeah. days in a row and through the week, right? And they say that they just see the car or the party or the thing and they just attach me to that and go, oh, must, must, must be nice. That yeah. one just... That's a jet. Yeah, I'm the same way. When someone says that to me, I'm like... My, my, fav- my favorite response. To- words. Yeah. My favorite response to that is, yes, it is. <laughs> it's really nice. <laughs> What, what is your favorite way to eat a potato? There's only one way to eat a potato, which is baked. Ooh, <laughs> this is why we're friends. Exactly. <laughs> what, what would the title of your autobiography be? <laughs> uh, you don't have to keep it clean. <laughs> title of my autobiography. Um, Dyslexics of the World Untie. <laughs> That's the one thing you and I have in common. <laughs> um, what is the biggest turning point in your life so far? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, okay. For me, it was identifying one specific mentor. At the time, I didn't even, the, it wasn't even a mentor. It was just this dude who was kicking ass uh, both personally and professionally. And I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to be like that guy. And I was like, I'm just going to do whatever it takes to be that guy. And so I spent time with him. I worked for free to like be in his sort of gravity, right? Just be there around him and attach myself to him. I was early twenties at the time and, um, act like him, talk like him, be successful like that person. He took me under his wing 
and some of the things that he taught me from a business perspective, how to interact, how to, how to speak, how to do public speaking, how to sell, how to do, man, it, it's easily the most valuable thing that's ever happened to me. That's amazing. What are you most proud of? Uh, outside of my family, my kids and my wife, the thing I'm the most proud of is my team. Um, so, so with my company, I'm not trying to become a billionaire or, or anything like that. That's not my motivation at all. I want to, I want to build a team of people that we love being together. We love taking on challenges. We work super hard. We have a lot of fun. I don't think that work has to suck. I think work can be awesome and be like the best part of your day. And so the team that we've been able to build is just the coolest, most accomplished kick-ass people. And that, like, I'm super proud of my team. Aww, That's great. I like that. <clears throat> what takes up too much of your time? Oh, boy. Um, I probably Making spend- coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A moment of zen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I probably Instagram probably takes up more time than I than I should dedicate to it. Uh, that's probably a bit. Twitter I think is a vile place that I spend way too much time on. So, yeah, social media just sort of in general. Yeah, no kidding. What is your favorite smell? Ooh, I want. Oh, this one's gonna a good uh, one. Okay, so a a jar, a sun crystal ball. Torreon jar. It's, a, it's so for people who don't know, it's a back in the day before humidors, there would be jars, these ceramic jars. That's how you keep your cigars um, humid. And Sun Crystal Ball is a small Cuban company, and they came out with a jar, uh, gosh, probably back 2011 or 12. And the and that was a sort of a special cigar just for that jar. The smell of that, I don't think I think that's the best smell that there ever could be. It's like tobacco and dark chocolate and saddle leather and i could just sit there and herf on that thing all day long (laughs) (laughs) you're snorting away at that (laughs) what what gets you fired up um inspiring other people so um you know i get dms from people all the time that are like oh thanks man hey you helped me through this hard time um one guy i helped coach him get this massive promotion. So he left his current job, got brought over another job and got this mega promotion. I helped him. Um, really, he did all the work. I just sort of gave him the confidence or the kick in the butt to do it. Man, that stuff is like, it, it's worth its weight in gold to me. That's, that's the greatest feeling. That's, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. What do you wish you knew more about? God, uh, Socrates was the wisest man because he knew he didn't know everything. Mm-hmm. I want to know everything about everything. Like I'm just exhaustively curious, right? So I, I, I honestly don't have a good answer. Only in that if you saw what I read and what I watched, it's just constantly trying to pull in more information about history. I'm a big history fan, although I feel like I know nothing about history. No matter how much I consume, there's so much more to learn. Um, wine, cigars, obviously, because that's my business. But but really, just. Uh, I'm sort of infinitely curious about all kinds of things. So I, I know it's a crappy answer, but but it's the truth. You yeah. want to just be a giant sponge. <laughs> sponge of knowledge, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, a good example is I watched a documentary on He-Man last night, right? <laughs> so, like, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I want to watch that. And like the day before, I, I read a book from 1770s about mentalism, <laughs> Right, because I thought that was interesting. So, like, it really is like just I want to know everything about everything, which is which is silly, but it's true. That's great. Uh, Last (laughs) question: What is the one question you would want everyone you meet to answer? Mm. Which bias do you all seek? (laughs) There's there's always one. (laughs) There's always one. So you know that that's a famous famous quote from I believe Aristotle. Um, who said, you know, whose bias do you seek? When you go and you ask, you know, wise men back then, scholars, um, you know, uh, information about one thing or another, you are inadvertently seeking some level of bias um, information. And uh, the, the, the amount of people these days that, that don't understand that they're falling into sort of a tribalistic trap of my team versus that team, you know, politics being the most obvious, it, it's really sad. Like you should question why you believe everything that you believe. 
right? right? And, if, and if you do that, you know, like Michelangelo said, I don't sculpt the statue. I just remove the excess material until the truth is revealed. That's how you should look at your views, your values, your political beliefs, like how you go through the world, like test it, right? Like a scientist, like they test their theory over and over and over again. People don't do that. They just go, well, my dad was a Republican, so I'm a Republican. My mom was a Democrat. I'm a Democrat. Or I read this like, online. I didn't do any fact checking, so it must be. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they just drink some Kool-Aid and like, that's it. And they don't even have any information as to why they even believe that. That's just that's really it, sad. Yeah. And sometimes their beliefs aren't even what would make them truly happy. They just think it's the right thing to do. Just the right thing to believe at that moment yeah. to virtue signal or whatever it is you needed to do. Well, that yeah. com complete side note has nothing to do with this, but have you been to the museum in uh, Florence, the Michelangelo, what is it, um, the Academia? The Academia. Where they have his unfinished... Where the David is, but they also, on the way to the David, they have the stone areas that he didn't quite finish because he didn't feel that it was in there. It's really, have you been? No, I've not been. Oh, not I 10 out of 10 recommend because they're all like half finished. And it looks like it's a, so cool. Something trying to work its way out of the marble. Yeah. It's almost, you said that, it's it just almost more me. impressive than the David because you're looking at these things that obviously Michelangelo was sculpting and they weren't mistakes. He just didn't feel that it was in there. He didn't right. feel that it was in, so he just stopped. <sighs> I've got to go see that. I can't wait to travel again. I'm, I'm desperate <laughs> to travel. Yeah. yeah, I think you would love it. Yeah, us too. <laughs> yeah, we got the itch. <laughs> uh, so, uh, shameless plugs. Shameless pl plugs. Okay. Um, if you like wine, yayin.com. Uh, if you want to learn more about me uh, on Instagrams at Puro, P U R O Rogers. That's it. <laughs> the end. And Puro and Trader. Puro Trader. HeroTrader.com. I have a lot of people at Askin that want to learn more about cigars. And if you check out the Puro Trader blog, I think you would find some really good information. Yes, absolutely. So start there. And then go buy everything so that he doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Go buy the stuff before Pierre does. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, plug away. What do I have to plug? Check out Foundation Cigars. They don't pay me, but I really like Nick, and uh, I'm wearing the shirt, so why not? Um, and uh, follow me on TikTok, Dan Daniels TikTok, and Danny'sThings.com for all my Triple X <laughs> and coffee and merch and everything. And uh, oh. Evil Genius Vic on Instagram, and my book Wait for the Corn on Amazon. Uh, highly recommend that if you want to know more about us. It's there. And keep an eye out for uh, Shop DD Box. We have new products arriving in about three weeks, coming mm -hmm. in from overseas. So it'll be a- I'm really excited. It's yeah. been yeah. a long awaited. It's so. been a long awaited. Everything on the site's on sale now to make for new stuff. So go take a look. Yep. And thank you guys for listening. And thank you, Pierre, for coming on and chatting with us. And per, as usual, motivated to go do things now after talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having me on. Oh, yeah. I'll, awesome. I'll let you get back to your beach life. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you get back to where you got to go. <laughs> so thank you guys for listening. Uh, please like, subscribe, and send positive comments our way. Good. That's it. Bye, guys. Bye, Pierre. I love you. Tell your wife hi.